Del Santo. And I'm Ron Bullicky. We're going to go over uh, stick defenses today, single stick defenses, but let me give you a little background on ourself. Uh, I'm a Filipino martial artist. I've trained under Diana's father, Dan in the Santo. And I've been around the martial arts world since I was very young, very young. Since you're crawling. 24 hours a day. Uh, wow. we, we've trained this a lot. We, we travel around the world teaching, and uh, we wanted to show you a little bit and bring this program to you. So uh, we're going to get started with this. Okay, now in this program, we are going to be focusing on stick versus stick. Now, in a previous program, we were focusing on angles one through five, which came from the influence of the Lameco system. We also went over some footwork. But if you're not familiar with that program, trust me, don't worry. You can tag along with us in this program. You'll catch on. But in this program alone, we are going to be focusing on backhand drills, the ABCs of, uh, you know, stick angles. Defense. Stick defense, that's right. Uh, we'll also be looking over um, disarms and uh, blocking as well. So, again, we use padded sticks a lot for training. We also use rattan sticks. So, uh, grab your sticks. If you're using rattan, be, uh, be aware, be courteous. Don't hurt your partner. And uh, let's get training. <laughs> Okay, first off, again, I'm going to quickly review five basic angles that you'll be needing actually to do these drills. And again, it comes from the Lameco system. So again, with a single stick, we're going to do angle one. Imag imagine a big, huge X in front of you, okay? So you got, you're going down the X, you're going up the X, you're going up the X again, you're going down, and then in the middle of that X, you're going to thrust. Again, so it's angle one, angle two, Angle three, angle four, angle five. I'm going to do it one more time. Angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five. I'm going to turn this around for you as well so you can see me from behind. Again, angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five. Again, angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five. And notice again, I don't go like this because that's not an alive kind of movement. In real combat, nobody would go like this. At least, God, I hope not. So anyway, so again, you want to utilize your body just like a boxer does. But again, this time, though, with the stick, using your body all the time. So now we're going to get into backhand drills. My husband, Ron, the love of my life, I am going to feed him an angle one, and he's going to backhand. Angle two, angle three, Angle four, and angle five. Now this is more long range. I would say middle to long range. Yeah, uh, what we're doing is uh, this is from Lameco Escrima. Lameco is a, a, I guess it's kind of an acronym. It's uh, la is largo, which means long. Mi is media or medium, and co is corto, close range. So they join it together, and it's la meco, lameco. All right, so we can do this at long, medium, and close range. We're just going to start long range right Again, now. So angle I'm one. backhand. I backhand, backhand, backhand and backhand. Now, what we call this, uh, uh, if, if I were going to use terminology, they would say oil de bes or otra vez. In, in Spanish, otra vez means backhand or oil de bes in uh, Tagalog in the Philippines. So we just hit one. Now look, remember the footwork that I taught you in the last tape. I still will use it. If the pressure is in on me, I will step back on that 45 degree line. And again, if you didn't see the last program, again, we'll go over the footwork. So you might want to. All right. One, two, Three, four, and five. Now, what right now, I'm just hitting Diana's forearm and I'm doing it with care and respect. And I am using a soft stick. If I have a regular rattan stick, I just touch. Placement. I just touch. I just touch. I touch and I touch. Don't hurt your partner. Or they won't want to train enough. with you anymore, trust yeah. me. <laughs> so the, uh, the target, uh, the way we look at it is if she was the snake, she is kind of a quick no. snake. <laughs> okay, anyway. she was a snake. If Diana's a snake, this is the thing. If I take the thing away, the snake is harmless. Now, right now, the way I equate it is, would you fight Mike Tyson? I mean, well, he does bite, but would you fight Mike Tyson? If he didn't have any arms, would you fight Mike Tyson? You might do it. Okay, so that's the, that's the kind of give that, that we do. If I go like that, that's gone, the way we look at it. Hopefully... If I go and if I get a knuckle shot, maybe she loses that weapon. Or if she has two weapons, I might go one, and if the second one comes in, I might hit the second hand. All right, so right now, if I could defang it, 
uh, and then defending it. A lot of systems teach to go to the core of the body. We consider this a gift because right now I am using my longest weapon. If I had no weapon, I would, I would be here, uh, you have to use my hands, but right now that I, I, I do have a stick, I use my longest weapon against the closest target. And I think of all flesh as a target if I had a weapon. So right there, I want to just pick off the hand. So right now, she's trying to enter to hit me. So now, if my target's her hand, her target's my head, who's going to win that battle? Good chance I'm going to take it. So right now, all backhands for the first drill. We go one, two, three, four, and five. And then Diana's going to take it once. One, one two, three, three, four, four and five. five. Now, remember the footwork. We had the triangle, remember this, when we step uh, on the 45, and then we had the 45, and then we reverse the 45, reverse the 45. We're going to use that right now, okay? All right, so when she comes, if I feel, if she's shallow with the blow, meaning if it's out there, maybe it's just about here, sometimes a simple lean will do it. Other times, if she really digs in deep, come in deep, I've got I've to get out of there. So what do I do? I step back on that 45. I can't stress the footwork enough. You need this footwork. You need to really drill it. Become proficient with it. One. So then give me the two, three, four, and five. If I feed Diana, I'm going to pressure a little now. One, two, three, four, and five. Do you see it? All right. So she did have to get back just a little bit, and then she recovers. Okay? So slowly. Let's go. First one. I say? I hit the hand or the forearm or whatever is closest to my stick. Diana goes. One, two, three, four, five. It's just a drill. We're going to add more to this, but just right now, what, uh, what I'm doing is they call this primero. I mentioned this in the last uh, program. We go one. See how far I'm sticking it out? Later, it's going to be like that, but later, she just goes with it. She doesn't care if she gets it because she will go, and then she'll recover with something else. Okay? So it gets very alive. All right? The, the beauty of Lameco, I was taught, to bring it to the, br to the brink of sparring, but in a controlled drill. So you get to stress somebody, but in a safe way. All right, and this drill is really good for it, because later I go one, I come right back, and she just double hit it. But right now, I just want to start single hits. One, one two, two, three, four, four and five. five. Then my turn comes. And one, two, three, four, four, five. Diana's turn. One, one two, two, three, four, Four and five, my favorite time, my turn. One, <laughs> two, three, four, oh, five, sorry about that. Okay. And one, one two, two, three, four, four and five. five. And let's change it to the angles too so they can see it. Okay, so slowly, when she comes with the one, I one, hit it. Two, two so I, I move three. away from the blow. If you miss it, you miss it. It's going to be that way. I mean, if you're sparring, you're going to miss it. How many times have you jabbed at somebody and missed? It happens. So if I were, if Diana were to go backhand and she misses it, go, she misses it. it just keep going. Go, whoop, whoop. There, two, three, four, and five. Okay, that's the first one. So you're still using the same numbering pattern that you were before, and she's just meeting it. So this is easy. The uh, key facts that I want you to know, don't grip the stick with a death grip. It's going to slow you down. Don't make your elbow stick out too much to the side. Look, put your elbow out like, like guys will do this, like backhanding. Yeah. They'll go like that. See, because, see what it gives me? It gives me that elbow shot. So you want to go here. And get, see, no, don't stick it out now. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So one. See, she's got it in. I mean, it's got to come out to a point. If you're here, it's got to. But we try to keep it in, not out. I see this a lot. I see it in sparring. And I just see guys, they just kind of go over here and they go, and they just take the elbow. All right? So when we go, we go one, one two. two. Three, four, and five. Last time. Am I feeding you now? Yeah, please. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so now that's the backhand section. So it's simple, just backhand retracted. Don't leave it hanging out, hang out there. If you blow through, that's fine. We're gonna be in a different drill, but right now for training, if you blow through, come back and just keep going with the backhands, just for now. Just get that down. Elbow in, retract. Don't have a death grip on here because it slows you down. Okay, so just you want to be loose, you want to be firm, hold it, you know, good tight grip, but if you over, uh, if, if you over exert on it, you tend to get stripped anyway. And You'll use see your it. body too as well. Again, I've seen people de deliver backhands like this, and this doesn't help your partner either. Make it alive, make it real.
Okay. And then on the feeder end, just pose it for now. Like right now, if I go, all right, Diana, you ready? She's a first day student, let's say. And I go, you ready? Go, go, come on. Get it, get it. Act like you're throwing like a, a, a five-year-old a ball. You're not going to go, hey, Johnny, come on, pick up the ball. <laughs> okay, you're going to go slow. You're going to go, you got it? All right, here you go. Oh, good. Yeah, you got it. That's great. Can you okay, tell so he's this a daddy? is kind of what you want to do with this, all right? You just start off easy, no pressure. As you get better, you stress a little more. Okay? So just, just play with it and pick up the pressure. Don't start off at 10. You know, you got to bring the volume up slowly. Okay, okay, so let's move on to the next section. Okay, second section. Now we're going to go backhand, which we already did, to the redondo. Redondo is just an elliptic motion. You're just going to kind of make a big circle. All right, so when Diana goes, she feeds me the one. I will still backhand, but I will make a circle. So just slow and easy. Slow. I will go one, this will hit. That's the intention. That's the intention. Don't hit your partner right now unless yeah. they like that, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I go around. All right, so backhand. So, no. One more time, please. Backhand, and then go around and get ready for the next incoming blow. So, right, what so I do is, what I do is I don't go one and then out. I don't want the stick kind of flopping around. It's not, it's not done. What I need is I need backhand. And then I need to recover right there, and I'm waiting. All right, now I just did a bad thing. I had my elbow up. I should be down. So backhand, and there. See, I'm big enough to say my mistakes. See? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so we go. Goes backhand, redondo. Then she'll come to second blow. Back, redondo. Backhand, redondo. Back, redondo. Backhand, redondo. Then and Diana. as a feeder, make sure you give your partner room too to go through this movement. Right. Obviously, if I feed Diana and she goes backhand, I don't want to be standing here because you're going to get clipped. Okay. Also, so, we should also switch around too as well, so they can get. That way you see me better. Okay. Oh God. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, and then Diana goes. One, two, three, four, five. You slow it. We should slow it down for them though. Okay. So we will. All right. So now, when we do this, again. Another one. One, recover and wait, because uh, this is what I always stress to my student. If we go one, there's going to be something else coming later. Like, uh, I just, I'm not going to do this now, but I just want you to know there's more in this. You're not done. This is not the whole art. When we go, uh, like if I have Diana go, go one, redondo, she hits. I might punch. She's got to be ready. So I just, uh, every once in a while, keep, it keeps your student on her toes, is I'll go here. One, two, three. See it? So that way she's ready. Ready for she the return. There. I might go like that to where she picks it off. Return. So what'd she just do? She just defanged the snake. Both hands are, are hit now. They're damaged. I'm not operating at full, full ability. I bet you I'm not the same man I was a couple seconds ago. And that's what you need is one, two. She can hurt to degree. It's crazy. They used to call this a moral art because I could hurt her to, to degree. I could go like that, take that hand out, take the other hand out. And then I have a choice now of going in for the finish or saying uh, she's done, go to somebody else. See, what they'll do is they will sometimes they will go pack and they'll hit the leg. Or, or if I go here, boom, take out the leg and then they know that you gotta, you, she's now gimp. You might she's want to explain what they is too. Um, in, in the Philippines, particularly during wartime, um, sometimes like for instance to preserve like a chief, if you had different tribes going against each other, Sometimes it was important to preserve the chief or maybe certain high key officials. Think if you so had therefore a you didn't want to really kill them. <laughs> yeah, so they, so you they just would hurt to injure them. them. They would damage them but not kill them. So right now, if, she, if I were a general and Diana just went pack and pack like that, and then maybe she took my leg out, she could drag me away and now she's got something worth a lot. And that was the idea behind it. But if you wanted to incorporate this, like for the streets, for instance, like where you don't, if you're on the streets and you find yourself being attacked, then you really don't want to use excessive force. Well, being a former law enforcement officer, I, you know that if you continue after the person has stopped, you're now breaking the law, no matter how good it might feel. <laughs> but, okay, the idea is, right now, if Diana were attacking me, if I took that out, I took that out, and I took that out, and she's on the ground, and now I go up to her and I go, like that, then I'm wrong. But up to the point where she's a threat, I would be able to stop, uh, keep defending myself. 
that's the idea that we go on when I teach my students. You always teach them mor the morality, especially when you hold a weapon, is I teach them, if the person is not fighting, you do not keep going. That's, that's up to you in, in your school or, or wherever you are, but I, I believe that you should do this with Have a, a with regard a, for the law. Yeah. You know, it's hard under those circumstances. But. So anyway, back to training. Okay, so back she's training. gonna go backhand. Backhand. To the redondo. Redondo. All right. Now that's the backhand to the redondo. All right. So you're just gonna drag through and recover and be ready for that next blow. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to go into a drill called the backhand to the X. You're going to make a backhand and you're going to imagine a huge X in front of you. Now remember, when you backhand and you're doing the X, these X's represent you also hitting the opponent. It's not some flashy movement. You are still making contact. But uh, in order to, con you know, to ingrain this material, you still have to put this into a drill method. So again, using the angles one through five, you're going to backhand and your X X, but in real life, what this represents is backhand, boom, boom. Okay? Again, backhand, X, X. Then he feeds me an angle two, one, two. Again, three, one, two. Angle four, one, two, five, one, two. Okay? So again, reiterating that X still means making contact, but to train these drills, we have to do it as safe as possible. When you have the soft stick, it's pretty easy. If Diana wanted to, we could play this game. If I wanted to do this. See, she's now she's getting total freedom. Totally what freedom to hit and not killing me. But if you have hard sticks, you might want to just go touch and then the one, two. Okay? So when we go, let's go through the angles. Yep. And then my turn. Aha. Okay. So ring one. There. So I go right here. That's it. So when we go right here, back and forth. Backhand. Right there. So every time you should visualize that you are hitting. Okay. It's up to your partner if he feels comfortable with this, but I'll be honest with you, I, I I'm not in a pain. But I just usually let my students go. Go back. Hit. See if she misses it, she does, because it's going to happen. Like, well, go one. She might miss it. That just teaches her to come back. All right. Everything that I do, I teach. In my mind, once you're in motion, you complete what you were going to do. Because it's right now, I'm going to fill this whole void right here. If I go and if I miss it, I'm recovering back down that line. It's important that you know what you're attacking. See, it doesn't have to be the fist. It could be. One, it could be this hand again. It could be one, I might kick her, and she goes. It could be one, maybe another person comes in right. and goes Multiple after her. Opponents. So you're, you're building, uh, this is just a basic movement, a root motion, and you just visualize. What I do is I always visualize. I go one, oh, there's one person, there's two person. One, there's another person, I go back to this person. You have to live it, you have to visualize it. Okay, so w when we do this, don't just sit there and just go one, one, two. Yeah, none of one, this. One, one, two. Please. It, it's not going to work. It doesn't and do you gonna, any good either. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. So visualize, play with it, be safe. Good. So you be safe with it and you, you just kind of like just carry on and train and do it. In, like even if I do it this slow, go. If I go, I think I'm hitting, I'm hitting. If I had a real stick, if I had this stick right here, Right now, if I'm going with Diana, I don't want to go back, right? Obviously. Well, sometimes I do, but. Oh, no, <laughs> stop. All right, so I go one. I might go here and here. I watch my control. There. Because even if I did hit wrong, it's not going to kill her if I'm respectful with it. And then when Diana goes. Soft sticks are amazing to me. They let you bring it up that extra notch and really give you the feel like you're really, really performing this or doing it. Give you that freedom, the aliveness uh, of understanding what it is, what you might have to basically confront if you are in a situation, in a combative situation on the streets. Okay, so to recap, we had backhand. We had backhand. 
Whoop. Backhand, backhand, backhand. Backhand to the redondo. And again, also to the same thing goes with the redondo. Again, backhand, redondo also represents another hit. Okay, it's not just a flashy movement. It is, it, it is a movement that has purpose and intention. So again, that redondo can mean this, if he knees after the hit. Again, backhand, good, or a hit. That's what the redondo represents, just like the X. It has intention to deliver pain. <laughs> okay, and then the last one is just going to be backhand to the X. Do oh, backhand okay. to the X. Backhand. Okay, so right now that brings us to, our, uh, that was our third in this series. And so now let's go on to the fourth. <laughs> All right, the last one that we're going to go into for this series, the backhand series, is the backhand. We're going to combine now. We're going to go backhand, redondo, X. So backhand. Feet are backhand, giving. redondo, then make the X. Backhand, I redondo, one, two. And as a feeder, make sure you give your partner lots of room, or you can get hurt. So Diana's going to go now. So she will go backhand. backhand See, so she hits the redondo, X, one, X. two. Backhand, backhand redondo, X. X, backhand, redondo, X, X, backhand, redondo, X, X, backhand, redondo, X, X, going back okay. and forth. So when we go one, the redondo, one, two. And then Diana goes. Okay, so again, I don't, I don't mean to be redundant about it, but if she goes and she punches, see that's there, one, two. Or if Diana double pumps the stick, one, and I miss it, and I can get it again. Then she punches, one, two. See, it's a universal motion. It's designed to pick up anything in this triangle that it's going in, okay? So everything kind of funnels in. If you look, the center of my stick is right here. That's a good and bad thing for me. See, it funnels everything in, but it also tells her that my hand is in this circle, so sometimes she can counter back in that line. All right, just be aware of it. There's always pros and cons. All right, so if we go, I'm going to go one more time. So backhand, I go redondo, one, two. Backhand, redondo, one, two. Backhand, redondo, one, two. I'm keeping my elbow in. Backhand, redondo, one, two. Backhand, redondo, one, two. I'm not flaring it out. Diana goes. Okay, so let's recap the whole thing. First one, Diana's going to go. Backhands. One, two, two three, three, four, four five. five. All right, next one. Backhand to Redondo. Redondo. Okay, next one. X, X. And then the last one. Backhand, Redondo, one, two. Combining. Backhand, them. Redondo, and she makes the X. In our system, we call this ecus is X. Okay, so they'll say redondo to the ecus. Okay, so they'll say otra vez, redondo ecus. Okay, a lot of Spanish in the, in the Tagalog language. All right, so uh, last time I'll recap it. So backhand, I backhand, I backhand. Use your footwork, backhand. Backhand to the redondo, backhand to redondo, backhand to redondo, backhand to redondo, backhand to redondo. Then we're going to make the X. Backhand, one, two. Back in one, two. Back in one, two. Back in one, two. Then the last one is going to go. Back in redondo, it. one, two. Back in redondo, one, two. Back in redondo, one, two. Back in redondo, one, and two. Okay, that's it for the backhand series, the otra vez series, or order best, depending on how you want to say it. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go over abecedario now. Now, abecedario is just the ABCs. All right, the first one that we're going to do, we're going to return again 
to our numbering pattern. I like the numbering pattern because it's not, uh, you know, I instead of me saying, Diana, give me that high left one or high right handed one, she, uh, I know if I say, give me a two, she knows that that's the two. Or a four, she knows that that's a four. It makes things a little easier for teaching purposes. All right, it's good for a student to number things and that way he can write it out and say, number one is here, number two, and everybody's on the same page. It makes the workout sm go smoothly too. Right, so Diana is going to go and she's going to meet the force of the blow. So she's going to hit my hand as it goes through. Remember, my course. target, the way I'm looking at it right now is I don't do nothing. I'm trying to hit Diana right here. Diana knows this, so she reacts by hitting my hand. Do you see the range? Right now, for me to hit Diana, I've got to reach into this whole wasp nest of the, the stick buzzing out there. So when we go here and I put that in there, it just gives her this full, uh, full target to hit at. So if Diana is whipping that stick around, come on, just buzz a little bit. See, I've got to move. Into, into there, she's going to get it. I'm trying to hit her torso. I've got to get past that flying stick. So right now, when we go, she's just going to meet the force of the blow. She meets the force of the blow. This is more long distance right. range. Yeah, this is, remember the Largo. So we're at Largo range, long range. So when she goes, she hits long range. Meet One, forced. two, Meeting the force. three, four, Five. And like I said before, it's not like Luke, you know, meeting the force. It's the force of the blow, okay? Some people actually question, what's the force? Well, this means the force, the way it's coming, okay? okay so we're not referring to Star Wars. <laughs> okay, so she meets the force, meets the force, meets the force, meets the force, meets the force. Now she's going to go with the force. So she goes backhand, and then when I come here, she's going to come over on the other side. And then she, what it is, she's just tracking it. So go to the other side. She tracks it and tracks it. So if I do this, first one is I meet the force. One, two, three, four, five. I go with the force. One, see how I come on top of it? I come on top of it. Look, I come underneath it, and then I pass it right here. Let me do that one more time for you. When it's a high angle, I like to come up and cut the line. Okay? Low angle, I like to drop down on the it. the force. Drop down on it. See, right now I'm going with the force. That's it. So Diana does it. Meet the force once. Meet the force. One, Meet two, force. three, four, five. Go with the force. One, two, three, four, and five. That's meet the force and follow the force. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to go into the gunting. Gunting means scissors. Now, the thing I want you to understand is it's not a scissor like this, like you see in some systems where they'll block this way or block this way or they'll block like that. It's not really that motion. What it is is I am going to hit with a stick as I pass the limb or the weapon by without hitting me, of course. All right, so the gunting, right now we're going to go right here, pass through, and I just want you to freeze in this position, and then you're going to uncross back. Okay, so it's just going to wipe out this way. So let me have Diana. Come on in, please. Okay. All right, so now when Diana comes and she gives me that forehand angle, this will go like that. So now watch. Uh, let me use a real stick for a second. I'm sorry. All right, Easy if on I the real have, stick. if Diana goes for a real stick, I will hit on the stick. The swing stick. I go like that. The reason I do this is for Diana's safety because I don't want to hit her with the stick, especially when you get excited and you get moving with it. So and if we were to go, pumping. yeah, if we go here, we go one like that, and then I would return the blow so at times. So right now, using the soft stick again, I can't stress safety enough. She's going to go one. That's the gunting, all right? And then what I like to do is I like to hit Reach back. Down. All right, so one more time. So I go gunting and then I hit back. Or if I, because I have the soft stick, I hit the limb and then I hit back. Do you see it? Let me walk you this way a little bit, please. Okay, okay so one, hit back. So now she's going to come with the two right here. Hit me right there. All right, so I'm right in this area. See this? Right on the knuckle. I wipe it and then I'm going to hit back. Okay, so one more time. One, hit. Two, hit. Then she's going to go three and hit. Let's start back at one again. All right, so gunting and then I hit back. Do you see it? Very slow. This, my body still moves. I'm stepping on that 45 that I taught you in the first tape, and I hit, and then I hit back. This hit back checks anything that Diana might do to me. Come at me one more time. Diana might want to hit me back with the hand, or, sorry, baby, <laughs> hit it right in the face. Okay, do it again. One, she might hit me with the hand. I hit it. 
She might hit me with the stick still. It might not be done, so I check it. She might want to kick me. If she does, I check it right away. Okay, so everything right now is about me just stopping it, putting a stop to it even before she thinks of doing it. If she does nothing, I might go here, like I did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so when we go, we go one okay. and then put it here. Then the next one's going to come. I wipe it out and see I put it right here. A lot of times what I teach, sorry about that, what I teach is I'll have her hold a weapon because this teaches Diana. I tell her, all right, I'm going to go hit. Now you meet it with a knife. Right there, no. Right here? Uh, Go for my hand, right there. Because see now, Diana's training. We're both training. So we go like one. She hits it. Offensive and defense. We're right. both training at the if same time. If she gives me the two, two, she meets it. Do you see? So now she's not just standing there being like a, 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 a body bag or a dummy. She's working too. She knows. Oh, she got hit. Doesn't mean she's dead. Doesn't mean she's out. It means she recovers. If I go here, she checks it. You see it? So right now we could do it with or without, because I like winning, so <laughs> take that away from her. All right, so one, right there. Two, babe. You want that? Two, right here. Easy. Three, here. Four, here. Five, here. Okay, so if Diana does this, she does the gunting, and she hits me. I get to. Hits me real yeah. hard, too. Two, there. Three, here. Four, here. Five, here. Now, you'll notice some of these uh, angles that we give, I'll hit the arm, or at times, I'll hit the knuckle. It doesn't matter. You think about it, right now, if she gets that full on, she's not going to be able to hold that stick. And that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. So we go, we go, gunting, backhand. Then she goes here, gunting, and then I'll hit. Gunting, hit. Sometimes it's on the forehand, or sometimes on the knuckle. Okay? It doesn't matter. So when she goes backhand, so right there, and then I hit. And then the five, right there, okay? So she's gonna go one, okay. two, three, four, five. My turn. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Okay, last time, Di, I'll let you have it. Oh. So she goes, gunting. Good, now I do it one time. Right here, hit back. All right, swing around. Okay. All right, one thing I want to stress to you is well, I, I talked about the X block. If Diana were to swing, it, it, swing the one. Give me one. one. If I if I went up here and I just blocked, for one, if it let's say it's something that can shatter, as a bottle or something like well, that. Double hand. Right here, one. Where's all the glass gonna go? Okay. Let's say I didn't block it properly. Where's the force of the blow gonna go? It's gonna go down on me. So what we do with the gunting is sometimes we pass it here, or sometimes we pass it here. Okay, depending on if my hand's closed or open. So right now, what I taught you was the open series. So we go one, like that. So where is the force of the blow going? Not over my head. Do you see it? Let me, let me explain this. Sometimes it's better explained with a knife. Okay, if I did this with Diana, if I thrust her and she X blocks, see the problem that I have with it is this. Do you see it? Ow, and that's so, <laughs> Sorry about that. One, see the cutback? and then the stab. And you're cutting all the vital <coughs> organs here. The too. same thing, I'll go reverse grip overhead. If she X blocks, see, look at this, okay? It, it, there's a problem there. Same concept. She's in line. So the, uh, if, if she has this, if I go, that's why we get the body out of the way. Or if she's here, I get the body out of the way. I don't want to stay here because she's going to pull down and rake up. See, and it's not a good day for me then. It's the same thing. I look at it the same way with a stick. If she's got a ball bat and I go, I got it, I'm in trouble. I might want to, if she has Let a ball bat, hand. same thing. I'll go like that and gunting. Okay, I get my body out of the way. I'm a little bit safer. Okay, so just be aware. Watch those X blocks. And uh, the gunting is a good modification. It, uh, gunting, the term means scissors. So I still scissor, but I get my body out of the way. I'm, I'm not forgetting my footwork. Okay, so gunting. Return a stick, gunting, return a hit. Constantly getting out of the way. Gunting, return a hit. Gunting, return a hit. Gunting, return a hit. That's what I want you to drill. <laughs>
Okay, now we're going to go into blocking and disarms. But before we get into the disarm section, we need to understand some fundamental blocks that are going to be applied to the numbering system that we've been going over. So I'm going to have Ron feed me an angle one. And we're going to first learn what we call a roof block. So this is what we want to do. If you can notice here, it's almost like half the roof. Pretty simple. So again, roof block. And again, I check this hand for safety. All right, and this will also set up for disarms. Now, the second angle, which is a low line, we're going to come here, and this is what we call more of, um, I guess, a wing, wouldn't mm -hmm. you say, honey? Low wing. And again, I'm checking here. So, again, coming low, I step out, and this is what we call a wing. And later on, I can manipulate this. All right, so again, roof block, and on the angle two line, we're going to go wing. Then, he's going to come again at an angle three. This is what we call a shield. Basically, think of a shield here blocking you. Again, this arm lifts up a little bit, and we're checking this arm. Okay, and the last one off the angle four is what we call a deflection. Again, when he hits the number four, I hit the stick, and I check the hand. But in reality, I actually, I'm going to go real softly, I hit the hand, and I check it. Okay? And then finally, on an angle five, we pass it. This is, think of it like a almost like a circle, and you're basically going to angle your body, getting out of the way of the thrust, all right? So reviewing real quickly, this is what we call a roof block, and again, also on the angle one, you can also even hit the arm as well, going slow. You can hit the hand and check the hand here. On an angle two line, we have a wing, oh, let me do again, angle two, a winging, or even here. You can even hit here on the knuckles, okay? And on the third angle, Again, you can hit the, uh, the uh, knuckles, but for safety reasons, we always hit the stick. And on an angle four line, we come and step to the outside, checking. And again, we could hit the knuckle, but for safety reasons, we hit the stick and we check the hand. And finally, on a thrust, again, we would normally hit the hand, but for training reasons, we hit the stick and pass it through. Let me have Diana do that one more time. I want to stress something. She's got the roof block, the wing, shield, and then the outside deflect. Now on the five, when she goes, I want her to knock it away and come through. Remember, she can hit the limb, it's gonna feel better. Like, thrust me once, please. See, if I go like that, it feels a little jammed. It's because we both have hard sticks and I don't wanna hurt her, so I've gotta really cut my line over. See, look down here, I've gotta cut it. So see how in I am, I'm a little, I'm jamming myself up a little bit. This will solve, again, if you use the soft sticks that we were using earlier. When she goes, I, I'm not as jammed out. Look at that, I'm, I'm hitting out. I don't have to watch out for her safety. I mean, obviously, if I were fighting, I wouldn't be watching for her safety, right? So it's designed for me to be able to hit this, like right in at me, thrust right into my belly, right here. So if I go like that, that takes it away. But it's going to hurt her, especially with a nice rattan yeah. stick. So with the soft stick, it's good for this one because I can open up. When I have to go on the stick, you're going to see that you have to kind of cut the line down. Just deal with it, bear with it. If you both have hard sticks, it's just you get a part of the drill, a part of the training. You'll know, trust me, I think it will come out later that you will get on the, the flesh. Okay, so let's do it one more time. Okay, so roof lock, checking the hand, wing, shield, outside deflection, and passing it. And those are your basic blocks. All right, now you've got all the blocks that you need. Now we're gonna go into the disarming or stripping. If I strip the stick from her off the one, this was the roof block, do you remember this? Now, come on in here. Let me swing you this way, actually. All right, if, if, if you come on in, I want this grip. Uh, we're taught, actually, always to grab the pad of the thumb. If I were to grab the wrist and Diana didn't want to let go of the stick, she can manipulate out of it, okay? The same thing here. If I grab it and I, I go like that, see, it can pull out or she can twist out. So the ability I'm, to hold the stick. Right. So if I'm here, this is no good, okay? She can, she can still manipulate out of it. This is a very important point. What I do is I take all those pivot points away by grabbing the pad of the thumb, okay? Very so simple, we're always simple. going after the pad of the thumb. I go for the pad of the thumb, pad of the thumb, pad of the thumb, right like that. See it? So let me slow it down. Always grabbing the pad of the thumb. All right, grab your stick, please. Okay. Okay, so now, with that said, when she comes in and I roof lock, 
we're going to go right here. I can hit down. See what I do? So we go one. See, this hits the head, and I pull it to here. I have the pad of the thumb. I put it right to my body. See this right here? That's going to come out. Okay. One more time. All right. Let me swing you over here, please. If we go here. Again, from this angle. I roof block. See, this can hit if I want to, and I turn it. All I do is I step in. See how I step right in? This comes through, and then I just hook thrust right at the face. So now she's not only worrying about keeping her stick, I'm giving her something back. Okay? So one more time. So I go one, first hit, second hit as it takes it away. Now I could come back with two sticks if I want to. Okay? So one more time. Reiterating the roof. Sorry. Give it to her. Come over. Again. Thrust, and this takes the face and I come out with the stick if I so choose to keep it or discard it and throw it away. Okay, it's my choice. One, right there. Okay, one more time. So hit me please. One, right here, pull, and then I come out. Okay, so now the next one is gonna be our low angle. When I come in, look at what I do. Remember the gunting? So we're gonna do the gunting. I come out, look at what I do here. Let me spin you this way, guys. Okay, now watch this. I go one. This hopefully is on the knuckle. Okay? One. Then I pull and I hit right here. I'm just going to have you turn and take it. This is what we're just going to snake it. We engulf the stick. Okay? So one hit. This hits because I keep her, I don't know, keep her honest. I don't want her to, uh, to hit me, so I strike it before she can. Yeah, look at the leverage. Then I just pull right here, and this will give me the stick. I have many variations for this, but this is the one we're working today. Right here. Hit. Just turn, and that's going to give you the stick. Let me do that again. So, oh, I'm sorry, I almost did the wrong one. One, hit, and then turn and take it. Okay, that's our second one. The third one, the low angle here, I'm going to drop. Now, as soon as I drop, I put my, uh, it, my stick is going to go hit, and I just turn the wrist over. This does two things for me. When I hit, it hits the head. Turn you this way. Okay. Okay. So when I go here, I go like that. That's going to crown her right there. Then I just grab. I grab on the forearm, slide down to the pad of the thumb, like I've already taught you. This ejects it. This can wipe out low, go high. You see it? OK. So I go one, two. Then I just go right out here. And then you hit, OK? And one more time. So one hit, grab, eject the stick and then I hit. Okay, that's our number three. The number four, when she comes here, I can go here like we did the roof block, or I can go under it. See this right here? My forearm takes it. One more time. Nope, the leverage. I can go on, uh, from underneath it, or I can meet it. Either way, it's your choice. One, if you meet, you hit. See the forearm? And the leverage right there. And then the next one will go from underneath it, hit. Now be careful because this is designed to fly the stick, both sticks right at the face. Okay? So I, I meet it, hit, I grab the pad of the thumb, eject it, and hit her. Or I can go underneath it, hit, and eject it. They call that umbrella. Okay? Now the number five, the number five, I want you to drop the stick right on it right now. You see it? This one's pretty simple. I drop, and now watch. I trade grips and grab the hand. See how I eject it? Okay, so watch one more time. If she thrusts at me, come on in. If she thrusts, I go one right here, and then I eject it. Okay? Also, what we can teach is when she gives the five, I can go like that, and then I can go directly back to the ejection. Okay? I should have taught that one because that's the one we did, but I'm going to give you both. All right, one is you drop on it because you can't always pass it. Or if the pass felt good and you just dropped, you go here. See the trade of the hand? Grab, eject. See, this sets up arm manipulation and locking. Okay? Or if I go through, just dig in and grab, eject, and then go. Okay, so now we're going to recap. All right, so Diana comes in. We have the roof block, right? I hit, come out. Ooh, this hooks through and then I can come back with the double stick. All right, so from the ba uh, low backhand, I am going to come drop down, okay? We engulf, 
take it out and then you could come back with both sticks if you so choose. All right, the third one, when we go here, I can come over or I can just drop it, uh, meaning come over with, uh, with my hand, but the stick comes up. I grab and then I eject it right there. Okay, let me do that again. All right, so watch, I go one here, right like that. Then I grab, eject. I don't want to complicate it too much, but let me show you this. Watch this. If you think about this, if Diana continues to press in, I just roll it over, just like that. Can you turn a little bit this way? All right, now watch this. So when I go here, I just roll it. This will just come right like that, and it ejects it. Again, I'm grabbing the pad of the thumb. All right, so one, just push it over. See, even if my, my stick or my forearm get on it, it's okay, because I just eject it, and then that would hit. Okay, so now when the four comes, I can go with the roof, I can swing it down, it's your choice. So when we go here, I hit, and then I take it out. Okay. Or from the outside deflection, I hit, I engulf it, and I turn. Let me turn you back this way a little bit. Okay, one more time. And go four. So when I go to four, I hit. See the, this? I hit the, uh, the hand before she has a chance to come after me. I just turn, and then I take the stick. The number five, I taught you two ways. One, the first way Diana showed you was to bring the stick out here. So if we bring it out here, I just eject it, okay? But you're going to see, sometimes you're going to go to hit it, and it comes to this side instead of it going to that side. If I hit it and it goes to this side, grab your own stick, grab the wrist, see the ejection? Now look at what we have right here. It's, a, it's a, uh, arm manipulation or and an arm bar. And that's tapping. <laughs> okay, Make so sure grab you your that. stick. <laughs> okay, so now, that's pretty much uh, the, whole, the whole set that we prepared for you. If it goes this side, you grab, eject. If it goes this side, chase in and grab, eject. Okay, that is one to five uh, disarming. All right, this ends the disarming section. Remember, disarmings are incidental if not accidental. You don't force them. If you force them, the man can bait you. He can do a lot of things to you. You might not be able to get a good hand manipulation. If you find, if you find that you're going and you're on it good, yeah, by all means, try to take it. But don't be engrossed by it. Don't let it consume you. I've seen that so many times to where somebody's so interested in getting this lock and all of a sudden a person is punching him in the face and he's still just trying to get the lock. Uh, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's a double-edged sword. So and that's where utilizing the backhand drills and the ABCs, what we call the abecedario, those uh, strike drills, will come in handy. And also, too, you can use to incorporate that with the disarms as well. Okay, so remember, don't put too much into all these strips. If they're not there, don't try it. If you do get a good hand grip, take it. All right, you got to learn when to let things go. If it's not working out that great for you, just keep moving on and go on. Uh, we've given you so many other drills, just go back into your other drills. So uh, just because it's hard doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It just means you need more training time. The more sweat in the gym, the less blood in the field.